What's up everybody, it's Joe here with Joseph Blake Photography and in today's video we thought we were done with Apple News but this week there's a ton more to talk about, especially for creators. Whether you're a photographer or a videographer, there's a ton out there. Number one, we've got new info on the Mac Mini that I think you're actually really gonna wanna hear. We've got some prognostications on what the Mac Mini Studio might look like performance-wise. Apple made a gigantic purchase in the last week that I wanna talk about and it's gonna have a huge impact on the photography community and we've got a sneak peek at what the new Final Cut is gonna look like. So that is a ton, let's jump in. So I'm Joe, this is my channel, Joseph Blake Photography. I am a landscape and portrait photographer here in Las Vegas, Nevada. And on this channel, we talk about tech and news and gear and tips and tricks and all the things related to creating content, whether it's here on YouTube, elsewhere on social media, if you're delivering to clients, if you're delivering to friends and family, or if you just like making cool stuff and using this technology. And if you're into tech and news and gear and all that sort of stuff, I'd appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button. If at the end of the video, you think that I've done a good job, wait till the end, watch the whole thing, wait till the end. Let me know if I've done a good job by hitting the like button. If you want to follow me on all my other social media platforms, links down below as well as a list to all the gear that I use. But that's enough about me and the channel. Let's go ahead and jump in and talk about all of this Apple Mac stuff. So we had all these announcements from Apple uh, about the M4 Max, right? The iMac, the Mac Mini, the MacBook Pro. Now, creators use these products, absolutely, but it wasn't necessarily geared just towards creators, right? It's consumers and just a little bit of everybody that's gonna be using these products. But specifically, the items that I focused on the most when I was looking at it was the MacBook Pro, as well as, and especially, that Mac Mini. Before we talk about that, in these releases, we got a little bit of input into what we're gonna see with new versions of Final Cut. So now I edit with both Final Cut and Premiere, and depending on the project that I'm using, I'll switch back and forth. And one of the features that I absolutely love in Premiere is the fact that it will transcribe my videos. Inside of Premiere, when it does the transcription, you can do text-based editing. So if there's a sentence that I wanna delete, or if there's a word or an audio gap, because I have paused for a second to think about what I wanna say next, which I do all the time, I can cut that out instantly, and that makes my edit significantly faster. And one of the features that we've now seen in the kind of screenshots that they had for Final Cut to be able to create AI generated captions. And I just, I really hope that they take that one step further and allow text-based editing. The other thing that they mentioned was the ability to create immersive text and effects also using AI, where it might recommend things to you like transitions, text effects, or other types of adjustments. The other update that we know is coming to Final Cut was something that was actually announced in June around the Vision Pro when it got version version two of Vision OS. Spatial video from the R7, uh, spatial video from the iPhone 15, spatial video from the iPhone 16 would be compatible in a newer version of Final Cut. But the other feature that we just kind of heard about was a magnetic mask. Creating a tracker and attaching a mask to it and trying to do kind of frame by frame edits, uh, especially with color uh, to maybe brighten up a face or tone down a specific area of an image and have that move through the entire clip without having to keyframe it for everything and have you be able to just kind of snap onto things with tracking. That seems like something that would be called magnetic mask <laughs> and it would be awesome if they could do that because I feel like that is the kind of feature that would make my life a lot easier. So I'm very much hoping that we see a Final Cut 11 very soon, hopefully before the end of the year. But in other software news on the Apple side of things, Apple bought Pixelmator. And Pixelmator as a developer, they, they have two products that I specifically want to point out, which is Pixelmator Pro and Photomator. And Pixelmator Pro as an app is, well, it's super powerful, right? It has a ton of AI features. It relies heavily on machine learning. It has masking tools, enhancements, uh, you know, subject detection, things like you'd see in Photoshop and Lightroom when you're editing individual images. And while Apple has incorporated some machine learning and some of editing stuff into the Photos app, that is still very much a kind of basic entry level and Apple says, and, and Pixelmator says that they're not gonna make a lot of changes, right? You're not gonna see a huge amount of shift here. They're just gonna buy it, which is kind of like what they did with Logic back in the day. They bought it and it just kind of, it is what it is and it continues to improve and enhance, but they didn't go in and just make a, a bunch of huge changes to it. They could also go the other way and kind of strip out all the fun features and just kind of start throwing them into the Photos app, which would be really disappointing and I hope that that's not 
what they do. But this isn't the first time that Apple has had a photo app. Users of Aperture, myself included, who, who were Aperture users way back in the day, who chose Aperture over Lightroom because it worked better on the Mac. And when Adobe switched to subscription-based pricing, it was a single purchase that you could make that didn't require you to have to pay every month. But Apple stopped making Aperture. They, they discontinued it years ago. But now Pixelmator has this app called Photomator, which is a phenomenal gallery application that has culling capabilities in it that as a, as a photographer who does families and portraits and, and some action stuff where I have hundreds and hundreds of shots per gallery to go through and cull before I even get to the editing process. Having that as an Apple product that is utilizing Apple intelligence or machine learning or, or any of the technology in the Apple Silicon while not requiring me to pay Adobe a monthly subscription and maybe incorporates into iCloud or Photos, that would be something that I would be really interested in not just for myself, but also in the fact that it would create more competition in the market so that Adobe and, and the Lightroom folks would have to continue to kind of push things forward. So obviously we'll have to see what Apple does with this, but, but this is a, a, a huge shift, I think, this year for creators, for Apple as a potential vendor for some of our tools because we, we can buy a lot of the hardware from them, they have great products. But if you remember when they started talking about video editing, they were talking about DaVinci Resolve, right? They didn't even mention Final Cut as like, hey, this is the editor that you wanna use. But now we're hearing that they're gonna be bringing updates to Final Cut. They stopped doing Aperture and we thought, okay, well, Apple's done with photos. And then they go, they buy Pixelmator. So maybe they've kind of turned the corner and they see more opportunities in the market for professional creators to be able to use their products instead of just installing someone else's software on their hardware. Because if we know anything about Apple, we know that if you're taking a cut, they want it to be their cut, especially if you're gonna put your software on their hardware. All right, now, speaking of the Apple cut, I've I've said this, I've said this repeatedly, uh, and I talked about it specifically in the video where we talked about the Mac mini. Apple charges a ridiculous premium for things like RAM and storage. So if you were in the market for a Mac mini, and I stand by my video's title, that is not clickbait. I think the M4 Mac mini, the base M4 Mac mini for $599, $499 if you have an EDA, $499 if you have an EDU email address, by the way, that is the best deal in computing. That's it, right? Whether you need a creation device or if you need a kind of multi-purpose computer, that is a phenomenal computer. Even with 256 gigabytes of storage, it comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM. It has a phenomenally fast CPU. It's teeny tiny. It's got HDMI 2.0. It's got three Thunderbolt 4 ports and two additional USB-C 10 gigabit ports. That is a workhorse of a machine. But the minute that you try to upgrade the RAM or you upgrade the storage, honestly, the value proposition really drops considerably. The Verge actually had a calculation that said that, well, if you actually upgraded the RAM and the storage like to the next you know, levels, you actually would spend about as much as you would for a second Mac mini, which doesn't make any sense. Well, iFixit got a hold of the Mac mini and they tore it apart. And guess what? The storage is actually removable. Once the fan is out, I have access to the single NAND storage card. Unlike the Mac Studio that had two ports, the M4 Mac Mini only has a single port. Here's a Mac Mini 256GB module alongside a 512GB module. And I can hear you all in the comments, but it's a proprietary connection, it's not some, I can't just buy an M.2 SSD. You're absolutely right, you can't. But there's actually a reason that they do it this way. They've been doing it this way for quite some time. There, there is a workaround. So the reason why Apple traditionally uses their own proprietary memory for storage is because the controllers are normally not on the storage chip. Normally the controller is actually either a part of the CPU or a separate part of the kind of IO package. So it's, it's off board. So they don't need that. And when you go and you buy like a M.2 Samsung drive, that chip has a controller on it and Apple doesn't need that and that would get confusing and so they build their own and theirs is faster and they like theirs more and whatever. But companies like OWC and others have over the years created memory. You do have to take the thing apart, so that you do have to do that. And I still don't think that Apple should charge as much as they do for storage, but 
that will be an option for those who are looking to upgrade your storage. Just grab an M.2 drive, uh, cheap on Amazon, I'll, I'll link one down below, and an enclosure that allows you to get the 10 gigabit speed out of USB-C or Thunderbolt. They're super fast, they're tiny, they're portable, and they're great to use, and you can switch them between like your MacBook and your, and your Mac Mini if that's what you're using. Okay, last but not least, I wanna talk about the Mac Studio. Now, we haven't seen an announcement about this product yet, but we can, we can do some math pretty quickly on the back of a napkin to say that in 2025, we will be getting an M4 Mac Studio. We know that it's coming. It'll be equipped with Thunderbolt 5. It probably won't get the scale down treatment that the M4 Mac Mini got, or if it does, it might be more, I don't know, it might be more akin to like a tower, similar to what we used to see on the time machine units uh, from Apple. That would be a blast from the past. But we know that there will be a Mac Studio and it will likely be coming with the M4 Max chip and the M4 Ultra. And that's what I wanna talk about. So first, just imagine we've got a Mac Studio. It's got the faster bandwidth, right? That 120 gigabits per second Thunderbolt 5, you're gonna be able to do just all the external stuff ever but that's what we're starting with. Now, currently, if you were to try to go on Apple's website and try to buy the Mac Studio, it's coming in the M2 variety. That's where we have the Ultra chip. The M2 Ultra, you can get in the Mac Studio and in the Mac Pro. And if you look at the M2 Ultra and you compare it to the M2 Max, just like we've seen with most of the progression of Apple chips, they just glue two of them together. Right, Apple takes what they call their Ultra Fusion technology and they take their Max chips and they slam them together to get the Ultra chip. I have no reason to believe that they wouldn't continue using that same technology and improving it to be able to move to the next level with the M4 Ultra. I keep saying megabits. So the M2 Max that you can get in the studio is 400 gigabits per second memory bandwidth. And then when you go to the Ultra, right, it doubles that up and you get 800 gigabits per second. When you look at the M4 Max, it's 546 gigabits per second. So double that up and you're looking at close to 1100 gigabits per second of throughput on an M4 Ultra chip. The M4 Max also has 16 cores of CPU compute with 40 cores of GPU. Slam those together, you have 32 CPU cores and 80 GPU cores. And here's the fun part. The M4 Pro that's currently shipping inside the Mac Mini, it's the fastest desktop chip they have, which means it's currently outperforming the studio that you can buy today for $2,000, and it's outperforming the M2 Pro. And the M4 Max is even faster than that, and we're talking about putting two M4 Maxes together to get an M4 Ultra. So what I'm gonna, I'm gonna estimate uh, that we're gonna see here is gonna be the M4 Ultra. The M4 Ultra will have the 32 CPU cores, the 80 GPU cores, the 1100 gigabits per second memory bandwidth, Thunderbolt 5 in that studio box, even if they do make it just a little bit smaller. And then we'll see the Mac Pro. And I'll be real honest, I don't think they're gonna do a whole lot more to the Mac Pro. I think they'll still give us the expansion capability and the larger chassis. So just to recap, we should be getting an update to Final Cut Pro any minute now with new AI, Apple intelligence, machine learning features. We're crossing our fingers that Apple really starts to care about Final Cut. We're probably gonna be seeing some tweaks to Pixelmator and Photomator now that they are being brought into the Apple ecosystem as long as those purchases are approved uh, by federal regulators which now I think is just Elon Musk. I think he's, I think that's it. I think he is the FTC now. And we've got a good idea that in the first quarter of 2025, we're gonna be getting a Mac Studio with an M4 Ultra that is going to be bonkers fast. So that's the news that we have. If there's anything that I missed, let me know down in the comments. If this is the kind of thing that you are into, if you're into this information, if you are into creation and this technology, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button. And if you hit the bell and there's new info, when I make a video, you'll get notified. If you thought that this was informative and helpful for you, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button. That tells the algorithm that I'm doing all the right things. Obviously, all of my social media accounts are down below, as well as a list of all the gear that I use. But that's it for me today, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks.